Hi there, folks. I'm super excited to welcome Joey Keller to the stage. Joey is from uh, CTO at Friendly Automate, and he's going to be doing a great talk, How to Be a Better Emailer. So I'm really looking forward to your insights, Joey, and uh, over to you. Hey, Ruth. Thank you so much. Uh, so um, I don't know. I probably probably some of the folks who are interested in this talk are still hanging out in the other uh, track. But if someone is joining in the meanwhile, please ask questions. And even if I covered it before, I will go into it one more time. So it's absolutely no problem. So latecomers just ask the questions. So about myself, I'm Joey. I'm a CTO at Friendly Automate. By Friendly, we are building ethical marketing tools. One of our products is a modic-based solution. Another product is a uh, is a Google Analytics uh, competitor. It's a uh, it's for uh, measuring your your website visitors and knowing more information about them. But now we're going to talk about uh, emails. Um, this this topic comes up in the forums from time to time, actually pretty often, and we're always going back to the basics. So it's really cool that I have the opportunity to talk about it now because if this is going to work out and, and we manage to cover all the basics today, then it will be just a video I can refer to uh, in the future. Um, Let's talk about emails and why is it so important? Well, if email would be a social network, it would be the biggest one in the planet. It has more than 4 billion, 4 billion users if it would be a social network. So more than 4 billion people have email addresses so they can actually um, reach each other. Um, email marketing has one of the best ROI ever. So between... 122%, 4,200%. You can find different kinds of uh, uh, metrics on this, uh, depending on where you look. But even with the lowest number, you can find 122%. That is pretty amazing. So I say that email is the best investment someone can do. Um, most of the B2B marketers will use email for their marketing. And a bunch of the customers uh, will also use uh, their personal emails to receive uh, different messages, what, you know, can be used for delivering uh, uh, content to them, delivering offers, delivering information. And you can also ask, yeah, but there is Facebook and Facebook is everywhere and Facebook is cool. And Facebook are people always on Facebook. And a couple of years ago, I would have said maybe yes, but now I definitely don't think so. When you are building a, a list, that will be your data. Facebook will be Mark's data. So I suggest that you work on your data and Mark should work on his data. So try to build your email list as efficient as possible, uh, as ethical as possible, and you will have great success with it because all the requirements are there. So this is one of the reasons why emailing is so hard. It is so hard because it has such a great return on investment. So anywhere where there is lots of money, there will be also bad people. So emailing is so hard because it is made especially so hard. In back in the days, you could just you know collect a list. Let's say in the year of two thousand four, you would collecting a, you would be collecting a list, and a bunch of people would be you know you can just basically spam them, and a bunch of people would be opening your emails. Um, that has changed big time exactly because of the spammers. There are still 55% of all emails are spam. And now in order to have the chance to land in an inbox, you need a lot of setup. You need to digitally sign your emails. You have to set up Sanders uh, policy framework. You have to watch your domain reputation, IT reputation. You have to watch what words you are using. You have to use the proper headers. And you have to have the right software which is sending it out. So uh, emailing is really hard because it has to be hard. Otherwise, everyone would do it. And the truth is that there is huge noise in emailing as well because you're going to have, in average, 122, uh, 120 emails a day. So 
uh, ESPs, email service providers like Google, for example, they will make sure that your email is only visible if you have some kind of relationship with that person who is sending you an email. And this is a very good point that, that uh, emailing is all about relationship. Back in the day, it was enough if you did your setup right. Now it has to be the right relationship between you and the sender. <clears throat> so your goal is to have, to, uh, is, is, to, is to build a relationship. So you need to customize your emails. You have to properly target your segments. You can't just send millions of emails anymore. You have to be very smart about the amounts you are sending. Um, you have to make sure that your participant, the, the participants, the recipient, the participant of the conversation, which is the recipient, is opening the email. They even answer you. An answer, for example, is 10 times more important than an open. So all your emails, all your communication should be optimized for engagement. And if you reach that, you will always inbox and you have a great return on investment. Uh, let's talk about technical things. And these things are coming up in the forum a lot of times. Before you send an email, you should be able to understand the basic requirements for inboxing. And by inboxing, I mean your email is landing in the inbox, not in the promo, not in the spam box or any other tab. Um, you need proper authentication. So look at these words, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. Just look it up in the internet and check how it's set up. All three of them has to be properly set up before you send an email. In order to do that, you will find guidance by your third-party SMTP provider. So the company, what you use to send out emails, for example, Amazon SES, uh, SendGrid, whatever. How can you check it? Um, the fact if you passed, it's in the header. So you go to your Gmail, open uh, the original text, and it will be in your header. So you will see that the DKM passed, SPF passed, and so on. <clears throat> it's super simple. You need to have a good IP reputation as well. So if you are sending out an email just from a server, let's say you install a Postfix uh, SMTP server, and you are sending out an email from your own server without using a third-party SMTP, the IP address of that certain server will be checked. Was this used for spam or was this used for good emails? Uh, and if it's used for spam, you will end in a spam. If it's good emails, then at all you have the chance to inbox, but it doesn't mean that you inbox automatically. So it's very important what servers you are using. If using uh, third-party SMTP, like for example, in this example, we have um, Amazon SES, then the provider's IP address will be checked. And in this case, that's Amazon SES. Uh, well, they will send around 5 million emails on that IP per day. So there is no way that you can do better than that. I don't really see any reason why you should start your own SMTP service. Um, you can check your IP reputation, for example, by tulsintelligence.com. This is the screenshot from there. You, you will be seeing what's your score, what's your email volume. Uh, it's pretty good feedback, so you will always know, you know, if, if, if your, your uh, IP reputation is good or bad. Uh, if, you are, if you decide to, to host your own IPs, you have to watch this every single day because a bad send can ruin your, your reputation. Uh, if you send like 50 emails a day, you will have no reputation yet because that's nothing. 500 emails, that's nothing. Uh, you should think about reputation above like one or 2,000 emails per day from the same IP. It doesn't mean that under it you will inbox, but you will not inbox if you send more than that and you didn't properly warm up. Uh, I will not talk about warm up in this, in this, uh, in this presentation. If we have uh, some interest at the end, I can talk about it. You can ask it in the questions. So uh, how can you check your domain reputation and what is that? So domain reputation is a is the reputation of that specific domain which is in the email at any place. 
like that can be a sender domain. That can be a so-called tracking domain. Sender domain is when I send out an email from me at joykeller.com, then joykeller is the, sen the, the sender domain. And if it's on a spam list, my email will automatically land in spam. Tracking domain is, for example, I put I install Modic on a server called joysemail.com, and then I send out from my email, so the sender email will be me at joykeller.com, but the tracking links, which I altered by Modic, they will be containing the joysmail.com domain. So that will be also checked. So for example, if you think, oh, okay, I will send out 100,000 emails from this address, then I just make a new one. That's not gonna work. You would have to move all your, all your Modic to another domain to perform. Uh, and this is especially with Gmail, they will be very smart about it. So they will check uh, if you moved your domain and it will turn out pretty soon. Uh, you can try to, uh, you, you should try to avoid uh, the spam list. The common spam list like spam house or, or spam cop uh, are, these are the most important ones. You just go to their website and you can uh, check your domain. If you go to Barracuda Central, you can look up, look up all your all, all your reputation and see how you look in the eyes of Barracuda. MX Toolbox is a really cool free service where you can have daily feedback on your uh, domain reputation. Uh, this first one, SEM, is Spam Eating Monkey. That's a special uh, blacklist. Anyone who just registers a domain will land there on Spam Eating Monkey and only leave after 14 days. So that's like, uh, you know, waiting period to, to start emailing. You can also go to uh, postmastergoal.com, which is really cool because you will be able to see how Google rates your domain. Uh, and you can track it. It looks like this. This is very flat. Um, if you are sending very few emails, you will not see anything here. That means you just don't matter. <laughs> you are not important enough to be measured. Uh, if you're sending enough email, then you have a score and try to be here in the lower zero because that means you are, you are a very good sender. Uh, that's by postmastergoogle.com and it's like a five minute registration. It takes a little bit time uh, until it gets data. Um, if you are self-hosting, you will be have to set up our DNS. It's a reverse DNS which means that that specific IP address has to be connected to a domain name. Uh, for example, when I go back here, and where was it? One second. Yeah, so for example here, the RDNS for this specific IP is the a3-20.sp SMTP out and so on. So that's that's the that's the RDNS for this special uh, uh, for this uh, specific IP uh, and includes Amazon SES. So uh, they would have to set their authentication for Amazon SES. Based on subscribe, this is super important, and we had some conversation about this in the forums. If you use Modic, that's a newsletter tool. It will send bulk email. You like it or not. It is bulk because not a person sits down and sends the emails one by one. So you are bulk. Even though you send 50 emails, still bulk. <laughs> Don't try to call it anyway else. It's bulk. <laughs> End of discussion. So leave it there. It's there for a reason uh, in Modic. And you might land in promo in the beginning when you send emails. But once you start to build meaningful relationship with your customer, this will be moved out automatically by Modic itself. And Modic is smart enough to put in the least unsubscribe link as well into the header. So sometimes you see uh, on the top of your, your emails, like, uh, do you want to unsubscribe from this and this list? It's in your Gmail sometimes. Um, or one click unsubscribe in certain uh, email uh, providers. That comes from here. So these providers are reading these links and by clicking on them, you can unsubscribe. And that's a good thing because if someone doesn't want to get your emails, you should let them go, really. That's really important. <clears throat> so if you would take out that bot, what would happen? Probably you would be inboxing right away 
So you could actually inbox that one email or two email or 30 email, but would you inbox more? So I actually measured this a lot and Google will figure this out. So in the first example, I admitted that there is a bulk email. In the bottom example, I just used a simple mail, mail merge where I was pretending not to be a bulk mailer, but I was actually sending in bulk. So what happened was that, that the inboxing kept up slowly went up when I was admitting that I'm sending a bulk email, but if I was faking it, it went down and essentially uh, the, the, the domain was burned, which means it's trash. So you can't really use it anymore. Um, I put here this, in this slide, I put here this information about the industry average. Um, it's 21% uh, according to MailChimp, the open rate. Uh, industry average. This is a uh, nice information. You can see, you can do a lot better numbers with, with Modic actually. Uh, it all depends on the following factors, which I'm going to talk about now. So um, another important factor for your continuous inboxing and continuous delivering to the inbox is you need to deal with your list properly. So first of all, you have to use the right sources. Never buy lists. And I'm telling you, if you buy a list, they will screw you. You will have some honey, uh, uh, spam traps in it. Um, and you will end up on spam lists very fast. Same thing, you rent lists. You don't know how other people abuse the same lists. Don't do it. If you are scraping lists, if you go to Upwork, it's full with jobs like, you know, scrape this for me, scrape that. Those people don't know that. They can script the lists, but they will not deliver to those lists at the end. They will end up with huge lists and they will not deliver because script lists are always, will, will always end you in the spam box. Um, this is the same with the contract building list. Someone goes to, let's say, it's actually like scraping that they go to um, LinkedIn or something or the other method they're using. It's actually scary. You go to Google and you punch in, for example, uh, email uh, at gmail.com, file type equals XLS, and you just get a bunch of lists. Like it's crazy what's out there, unprotected lists with all kind of information. Don't use those emails because they will definitely land in spam. Uh, and never recycle lists, which means that, oh yeah, so you know you have a list and then it's normal to lose some, some users from the list, some contacts, because they will unsubscribe you will not use that email anymore. They move to the other company and so on. But when you see your numbers dropping, you might think, oh, okay, so they unsubscribe. Maybe I add them again. Don't do that because that will also build a bad relationship with your, with your contacts. And you don't need it, honestly. You don't need it. The, the long game requires you to be a good emailer and be ethical and you will inbox and you will make money. Uh, KPIs. Um, so this is different for every third party SMTP and it works completely different if you are running your own SMTP. Uh, for third party SMTPs, usually you are looking for, so this is Amazon's numbers, bounce rate above 5%, you are risking a pause, which means they will tell you, sorry, but you can't send anymore. We wanna do a manual review. Why is your bounce rate so high? If your complaint rate, is under 0.1%, you are okay, you can send. If it's above, they will again, pause you. Um, I use Amazon a lot. I had really big trouble with them in the, in the beginning because they just kicked me out immediately. The reason was that I was moving from MailChimp at that time to Sandy and I uploaded my list and I had like 20% bounces. Uh, they suspended me right away. Why? Because when I exported from MailChimp, I did not uh, untick the, the bounced emails. So I exported a bunch of bounced emails. Um, you should really watch that. And that's very, very important. I could talk myself out, but it doesn't always happen. So you get to a manual review and then it's your chance to talk yourself out. Um, you can play with this a little bit. So for example, if you are separating your uh, your openers and you're separating the other lists and then you are adding more, more and more uh, contacts to your list and suddenly you have a higher bounce rate, you can take your opener list, 
squeeze them in, do another send, and that will water down your, your bounce rate. So lots of marketers do that. So if you organically build your list, probably you don't need it, but it's just a trick that you might want to try. Uh, with Amazon, it can happen that they will manually review you because you are using words which they hunt for, like COVID, like 5D, 5G danger, uh, election, you know, these kind of things, uh, free money, <laughs> work from home. They will manually review you. They look at your website. They think you are using affiliate marketing. They will kick you out. So don't risk that. Uh, this is about cleaning. So in case you have a list laying around what you want to use or any list, please clean them first. There are services like email oversight. Um, this is a really example here. Uh, this is an old list I wanted to use and it was two years old. And by the time, uh, uh, so much time passed that 54% was actually only uh, accepted in my list. So many people just don't have the email anymore. It was a B2B list. So people move to another company and so on. And always check it. This, this one, if I send this out, it would have gotten me banned. So don't do it. You can also see stuff here like spam trap. These are abandoned emails, what are not used anymore, closed, but the provider kept it. So they keep getting email and they know if someone's sending to this must be a marketer. Complainers are usually harvested from from uh, complaint lists, you know, huge affiliate companies, uh, affiliate uh, marketing uh, provider companies are collecting the complainers um, in their uh, do not contact lists. And if you are on many of those, then you can end up as a complainer in a cleaning service like this. So do you want to build your own cleaning? Don't do it. You won't be able to because these guys are focusing on cleaning and nothing else. And they're really good at it. And you let couple of emails slip because you think you can clean these emails yourself. You won't be able to, you slip a couple of email addresses, those stay in and then you are donezo. You can't send anymore, you burn your, your domain. So be a good guy, clean your list. Don't scrape and make sure you, you don't have too many bounces. Um, this is super important. Do a double opt-in if you are building your own list. Uh, I know that you will lose some people, some contacts with that, but it's, it's, it's worth it because in the end game, you will inbox everyone else 10 times better. Uh, don't let the boss mess up your list. Use the double opt-in. Uh, and I've seen, for example, MailChimp is pushing the, 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 the double opt-out. Like, please tell us why you decide not to go with us. I think it's very annoying. And I think that somebody has to or wants to go. Let them go. Uh, it's not worse to ask questions. I'm really big, um, big fan of the single, single opt out, simple, simple and single opt out. Uh, even so, sometimes uh, when back in my uh, email marketing days, when I was sending lots of emails, uh, we put unsubscribe on the top. It does make sense because people, uh, if they right away can unsubscribe, they will not push the the, the complaint button. Okay, so how does Modic help us to send? Why is marketing automation is especially carved out for better inboxing? This is the exciting part because I, I moved to Modic because I really wanted to inbox better and I realized that this tool can really help me. So when you are sending out emails, let's say this is your daily activity, this is what type of like how you're sending emails one here, one there, another email there, and so on. This is a personal email sending. This is welcomed by Gmail and other providers. Uh, when you are sending bulk, that looks like this. So you set the first campaign and send out a bunch of emails. Next campaign, send out a bunch of emails. This pattern is recognized right away and it will land you in promotion tab. So. First, you will inbox, and then your inboxing will go down somewhat. Uh, with Modic, it pretty much looks like this, almost like personal email sending, because your campaigns are triggering in different times. 
So if you are not using Marika as just a simple newsletter tool, then you will have different events happening in different moments, different emails triggering with different personalized contacts content. So that's what you are really looking for to create great campaigns with personalized content and to send it to various people <clears throat> multiple multiple times a week and so on. Just keep, keep up the sending. Uh, it's very important that you keep your emails relevant. This is an example. We're using Twig a lot to spin wording. This is an example quote here. I help you to read what happens here is, is a German uh, uh, German language email where we understand that the person is a woman. And if you are using the direct form in German, then we're using this wording to say hi. Otherwise, we're using the polite form. If it's a man, then this is the direct form and, uh, and the more, uh, more polite form. So just here, our customers, our contacts will get four different versions. And this is working really well because you're not having just one type of text, but you are spinning the words. And you can do this with many things. You can spin any type of uh, contact field uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the emails. Segmenting. This is one of our clients who is concentrating on Bath products. Now, with Bath products, if you use the Bath balls, you have to have a bath. If you don't have a bath, you cannot use the bath ball. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> so it could be any other example, but I chose this one because it's really close to my heart. So on the left side, you see those are shower cubes. You use it in a shower. And we save this information in the, in the contact. Does this person have a bath? It's important because they will not see any other type of uh, advertisement, just what is related to them in dynamic content, in emails, in SMSs, because we will target them. So it will be more relevant for them. You can also use dynamic content in the emails. Uh, this is not known to everyone. I urge you to, to uh, try this out. In this case, if this person is not, uh, we're using stages here, so not a cold contact. So it's already, a, it's like a returning contact. Then we are telling the bonus points in the email. So I urge you to add the dynamic content as well. Let's talk about a little bit uh, the behavioral based uh, targeting. Uh, most marketers will be sending this. Red is an unopeners, green is the openers. So most of the list is non opener. Um, they would send it out and they would get an, uh, around 20%. Uh, this sucks. Like you can do much better than this. If you would only send the non-openers, you would end up with 5%. If, you open, if your open rate is around 2 3%, that means you are spam boxing and only the bots are opening your email. So, but there is a way to do this. If you separate your clickers from openers, and this is super simple in Modic. If you separate them, you can send just to the openers. They matter anyway. And then from time to time, send to the non-openers as well, but send them a specialized content. Try text-based emails. Try different wording, A-B test. But don't send all the time to the non-openers, just from time to time. <clears throat> so this is an example. So this is an opener. Email read count is more than zero. Uh, clicker. Who is a clicker? The clicker is that the URL from email equals something. So it's a yes. And did not unsubscribe and did not bounce. And then you can get a correct number of your clickers and you can identify them really cool. Uh, I talked about this in my previous presentation about the non-active ones. Um, an active person in Modic is someone who came to the website or opened an email. Uh, if you want to see who is active at all, you can do this. So you can say if the date active is less or equal than minus 30 days and the person has an email, that's a, a, a contact that you can reach by email and it's not active anymore. This expression is very important and I urge you to use it as much as you can because this is updating every minute or whenever you run your cron job and you can really... Uh, assign a time frame. 
just to put in your head how is it just imagine the line of time like just line linear and something which is less than equal than minus 30 days that means minus 30 minus 31 minus 32 so everything which is less than minus 30 so everything older than 30 days ago so for example you would want to target people who opened in the last 30 days that would be greater or equal than minus 30 so that's the past 30 days past months I think that's what I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah, one more thing, sunset policy. If you <clears throat> if you are a marketer who is using lists or reusing lists and you want to make sure that you only email a person just a couple of times, then what you can do is um, you set a certain score. Let's say everybody gets 100 score on a new list. And every time they do not open an email, you deduct some points and then set once someone has zero points, you delete them from the list. So it's like an automatic countdown. This is called sunset policy uh, in the emailing world. And it's really cool because you can retire emails who are non-responsive. And that, that's a really good method if you just want to go through lists. And I want to say one more thing, thing about timing, and that's a little bit connected with SMS sending. We did this for a client where uh, we took the, the time zones. We have a bunch of uh, phone numbers and the phone numbers in the world are set by time zones actually, pretty much. So we just divided three time zones, the American, this one here is a European and we did an Asian. And we were sending the emails and the SMSs also based on the time zones. So you can actually figure out the right time when, when you need to send if you're doing business internationally. Okay, I think this is what I wanted to tell you about emailing and how to be a better emailer. You can reach me uh, at my Twitter or email, or you can look at my blog as well. I have different goodies there and sharing different kinds of fun stuff like how to install Modic on a Raspberry Pi and how to use webhooks and all this, this kind of things. Is Ruth still here or any moderator? I am. Hello. Great. Are there questions, Ruth? Hi, Joe. We don't have any questions at the moment, but I have a question for you. So if I was completely new to email marketing, what is the one thing that you think I absolutely have to take on board? So if you want to start with email marketing, make sure that you give your chance, give yourself a chance to to reach the inbox. So read about the minimal requirements. I actually have something about this on my website, but I, I promise I will put it in the Modic knowledge base. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you are fully authenticated. So SPF, DPIM, DMARC, do these three things. Uh, check your domain reputation. So go to mxtoolbox.com and see if you're tainted in any way. And use Modic because it's a great tool for sending uh, emails. And also, please have SSL. So all your links should be SSL. It will also help your inboxing. And use a subdomain. That's also very important. And that's it. That's all the things you have to watch. Great. That's really helpful. I think we need an article like that in the knowledge base, actually, because there's so many right. people who come into email marketing and there's so much snake oil. There's so much people telling you to do stuff and it's not the right thing to be doing. So I think it's really helpful to have experts like you just say, like, these are the things, just do these things and you'll be on the right path. So yeah, really great. Thank you. Um, I had a couple of questions before in the, in the daytime, I was talking to some people and we were talking about email marketing. Uh, I'm just going to um, answer them here since uh, there are no questions. Maybe, maybe I, maybe it's interesting for someone. And, and one of the questions was that I will go back to that question as well. What is on the screen? Um, mm -hmm. So I was asked, is there any advantage of using the preference center instead of the unsubscribe? Because this is a setting specific to Modic. Uh, and it's very important. You can use the preference center because you can set up emailing fre frequency there. There is actually a way of campaigning where you are, where you can check if someone is, let's say, opening every third email. 
then you can put them in a special email where you are putting three emails together and then you send them less often. Uh, the, you can reach almost the same thing with the Modic Preference Center. It's really, really cool feature. Uh, you should definitely uh, use that. Okay, so uh, I've been trying to use open the email and click the email Marik, but have been receiving a lot of false positives. What are you doing about this? So why are you having false positives? Mo one reason is because spam filter is opening your emails. You cannot do anything about that. The only thing you can maybe filter out uh, the there is a time on the sent read ratio. So if that's really low, you can filter it out, but you get, you're gonna have other type of false positives. So it's really, it's it's your call. Um, there's not much you can do. Um, there's another thing, for example, that on Outlook, you're not gonna have any opens if you send uh, email to certain Outlooks because they will block the tracking image. You can't really do anything about that. You can have a downloadable content in your emails Marik is, is, is helping you with that, with assets. And then you can pretty much understand how much opens you have. But the solution is not to rely only on this one mechanism. You should rely on other stuff as well. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for answering that. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Like understanding the data that you're looking at as well, because initially you might think, wow, all these people are opening. But then when you dig into it, you realize, oh, actually, maybe that's not what I'm looking at. So I think yeah. it's something we can improve in the community if there's some way of detecting that or at least flagging that. Um, yeah, it could be something to think about if that's possible. There was another question before about should I use, um, should I use, text or HTML. And honestly, the most successful campaigns I had with HTML, uh, with text uh, emails or such an HTML, which looks like a text email. If you want to go really clean, take uh, Gmail, any Gmail, just write to yourself and turn it into a modic template and use that. That's gonna give you the best opening rates ever, I think. So if you're not selling with pictures and nice images and nice design, not so important for you, not building a brand, then, then that's also a way to go. And if you guys want to see some really cool stuff, go to the forums. There is a blog post about, not a blog post, but an entry about how to add smileys to uh, subject lines. That's really fun. And I tested it and the smileys are there. So it's really cool. Sounds great. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much, Jerry, for your time. I think we've come to the end of the questions. Thank you, everyone, for the great questions. Um, will you be around in the event a bit this afternoon, this evening? Yeah. Or I'll be yeah. here for another hour, probably. OK, great. So people could potentially contact you and have a call or whatever if you're available. Sounds good. OK, no. thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, bye.